The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. Our first presenter is Amir Bognador, and he is the Business Development Manager, uh, Western Region for Euclid Chemical. He has a master's degree in structural engineering from the University of Tehran and a PhD degree from Arizona State University. He has been dedicated to fiber reinforced concrete <coughs> and concrete durability. He joined Euclid in 2013. He's a member of several ACI committees. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Amir Bonacto with Euclid Chemical. Uh, the last 15 years of my uh, professional and academic life, I've spent a lot of time basically studying uh, concrete durability, fiber reinforced concrete, and what I have today here is a very short summary of uh, the basics, the ABCs of uh, you know, lowering shrinkage and improving long-term durability for concrete and some of the key points that needs to be understood and implemented. Many reasons for concrete uh, cracking and, and damaging from low strength, from improper curing and excess water, shrinkage cracking, freeze thaw cycles, <clears throat> alkalistic reaction, chloride, sulfur attack, acid attack, carbonation, uh, fatigue overloading. So typically for a slab on ground or uh, you know, a bridge deck, uh, we design this, the thickness for the applied loads, but yet uh, the majority of conditions that concrete cracks is for reasons other than loading. Uh, basically, a lot of times uh, has to do with durability and, and environmental issues. So how do we improve the concrete durability? Well, the first step is to make the concrete denser uh, and less permeable. The basics, you know, lower water cement ratio, use supplementary cementitious materials, proper gradation, curing, and so forth. Basically, the ABCs of making a good quality concrete. Uh, but again, specifically, you want to minimize the cracking potential for concrete. And to do so, we want to use a low shrinkage concrete uh, for this application. And we do what we can to minimize the cracking, but at the end, concrete may crack, and we want to control those cracks. And in this presentation, we are going to talk about specifically using fibers and fiber reinforcement for that purpose. So assume a 100-foot uh, span of concrete. It could be concrete on the ground. It could be concrete bridge deck uh, on concrete. And with a shrinkage value of 0.05%, which means over 100 foot span, it's going to shrink five eighths of an inch. If we were to pour that in space, it will shrink without cracking because it's not restrained. But we pour the concrete on the ground or on a concrete base, so it is restrained and it will crack as it shrinks. So we want to minimize the amount of shrinkage that would basically reduce the potential for cracking. Now to do so, there are different methods that we can, we can use. Uh, the, the best way to start is to have uh, an optimized mix design uh, that would actually give you lower shrinkage values. Uh, you can use shrinkage reducing admixtures or shrinkage compensation that actually leads to lower shrinkage values and, and moving toward uh, you know, lower shrinkage values would increase the cost for concrete. But at the same time, that means you could have less control joints and less cracking in concrete. So depending on the application and what uh, the project and the owner is looking for, uh, we could, uh, you know, decide what method or what combinations we could use for uh, doing so. Now, as you all may know, we only need a water to cement ratio of 0.25 for uh, the hydration reactions to, you know, be complete and, you know, gives you the strength that you're looking for for concrete. But there's no way to, you know, mix in place and finish a concrete with that low amount of water. So we always have to have an excess amount of water, basically the water of convenience that allows us to work with the concrete. Uh, but that extra water has to leave once concrete is, is setting, and that can cause shrinkage and cracking. So to lower the amount of uh, the excess water, you know, we, all, we always have to use uh, some sort of a water reducing chemical or plasticizer to get to the workability we are looking for without putting too much water in the concrete. Now, what cracks in the concrete is not the aggregates, it's the cement paste. 
So we want to minimize the amount of cement paste, which means we want to maximize the amount of aggregates. So the goal is to use more and, and larger coarse aggregates, which means there are going to be less uh, surface area to be covered, so we, uh, we're going to need uh, less cement paste, uh, less cement, less water, less excess water, less shrinkage, and less, less cracking. Now, going back to measuring the shrinkage and different ways of lowering the shrinkage, you know, just think of a typical shrinkage uh, testing, ASTMC 157. Uh, the black curve shows a typical Portland cement that shrinks, let's say, about 0.056%. We can use shrinkage reducing admixtures, lower the tensile uh, stresses in, in the uh, capillary and bring that to lower values. Or we can use shrinkage compensation, basically uh, expansive cements that uh, offsets the, the total shrinkage in concrete and get to uh, close to zero values for shrinkage. Now to kind of summarize this part in terms of mixed design, you want to use high quality paste, but not too much. Maximize well-graded coarse aggregate in concrete. Enough water for hydration and finishing, but not too much. Use plasticizers and using shrinkage reducing admixtures or shrinkage compensating admixtures to get to those values we are looking for. Now, as I said, we do all we can to minimize the shrinkage, but concrete you know, could and would crack uh, to some extent. Uh, so we want to reinforce it, we want to control the cracks. Back in the day, they used uh, straws in mud bricks. Uh, nowadays in modern concrete, we use fibers for basically providing uh, post-crack tensile and flexural capacity to concrete. Now, uh, you know, why not going with typical mesh or rebar for you know, a bridge deck application? Uh, typically, if it's placed too low, which could happen a lot in construction, as you can see in this basically cross-section of, uh, of, of a concrete core, it's too low, it's, it's not close enough to the surface, so it doesn't do the purpose in controlling the cracks. And if it's too high up, then it's going to be basically exposed after a while and it's going to start rusting. And at the end of the day, our concrete uh, bridge decks with steel reinforcement will have the potential for cracking, uh, especially in the case that we have de-icing salt, not here in California, in Southern California, but you go in a lot of other places, you have de-icing salt that can cause corrosion in concrete. So speaking of fibers, there are different types of fibers, microfibers and macrofibers. Microfiber is only good for controlling plastic shrinkage, cracking in fresh concrete. Uh, but when you go to these uh, coarser fibers, macrofibers, whether it's synthetic or steel, now not only can you get a crack control, but you can also get an improved uh, performance uh, in terms of the moment capacity and tensile capacity after concrete has cracked. Standard way to measure the performance of fiber reinforced concrete, ASTM 1609. Basically, you have a beam, uh, you load it, you break it, and then you continue loading it and you measure the residual load, the residual strength that is left in the concrete beam that becomes the basis for uh, fiber design. And the, the higher the dosage of the fiber, uh, the higher the residual strength and the post crack capacity uh, for fiber reinforced concrete. And uh, you will use these type of parameters basically for design, and you always uh, have the flexibility of you know, playing with the fiber dosage and the thickness and come up with uh, a design that would be optimized uh, for the application. What are the benefits uh, of using fibers? Well, in comparison with rebar or mesh, you're getting a three-dimensional reinforcement. Uh, so basically, reinforcement is all over the cross-section, uh, which means that you would have shorter and thinner cracks, if any, less spalling and less chipping, uh, an increase in long-term durability and, of course, lower maintenance uh, for uh, the application. A couple of projects, this is probably one of the oldest projects we have been involved with in, in Canada. Uh, a three-inch topping, uh, this was actually a repair project. So basically, they dug out the concrete and the, the rusted steel. They replaced that with a high-dosage synthetic macrofiber, and this was over 15 years ago. And today, uh, this uh, bridge deck is still in place without any, any corrosion or any major damage. A more modern application, a one and a half inch um, overlay, uh, UHPC, basically a high strength self consoling concrete with, with steel fibers, and that would allow for uh, one, ex extending the joints, and two, improving the long term durability and improving the crack resistance. Now this picture, this photo was sent to me uh, only a few months ago by uh, one of the DOT engineers I work with in the western part of the US. This was a brand new bridge deck, a, a steel confirmed bridge, bridge deck uh, that was exposed to unexpected high winds. And of course, all you see is this type of, you know, basically crazing and shrinkage cracking that could have been prevented 
with the lower, shrink lower shrinkage concrete and, and uh, proper uh, fiber enforcement. Uh, Caltrans, California DOT, uh, has been working for uh, a few years now to basically update and improve uh, their specs on um, bridge decks. And here I have a couple of screenshots of some of the presentations that um, you know, I, I attended. Uh, they have published a couple papers, and finally they came up with an updated uh, bridge deck spec. Uh, what they did was a thorough study of the, ex the, the, the current situation of the bridge decks in California and how they can improve that. So this summarizes what you know, that study showed and in terms of specification, basically using shrinkage reducing admixtures, using water reducing admixtures, and using fibers in the concrete. And what they uh, concluded was it cost the state of California uh, about $50 million a year to seal the cracks for bridge decks that had not been uh, done correctly, or they can use only $2 million to basically build a new bridge deck that has low shrinkage and fiber enforcement, and they call it a crackless bridge deck. And this is uh, one of the projects that we have been involved with recently. Uh, so the Caltrans spec is calling for one pound per yard of microfiber, three pounds per, uh, per yard of macrofiber, and uh, three quarter gallons of SRA shrinkage reducing admixture uh, for this type of bridge deck. And uh, so far there have been a few projects that have been successfully uh, completed. And that summarizes my uh, presentation. Are there any questions?